What up guys, it's me Jules aka RetroJ with a brand new review just for you and today we're talking about what Ben? That! It is what I was looking for, Stephen King's It, thank you very much for that. Um, uh, we're doing a review for the new It film that's just come out, saw it this morning, bit weird seeing a horror film of the day, but let's crack on with what I think about this film running out of steam already, good. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story of it, the rather heinous and murdery clown, it's about a group of friends who are trapped in suburbia and they have to find out why their friends and family members are going missing while also being haunted by some pretty terrifying and intense personal fears. It's one of Stephen King's most enduring tales and was actually brought to life on the big screen before in the 1990s with Tim Ha Ha Curry as Pennywise the Clown. Now, I hate to say this, the film hasn't aged that well. In fact, it's heaps boring in some areas, apart from Tim Curry's outstanding performance. So luckily, this reboot slash remake slash whatever this film version is, is not only a fantastic treatment of the story, but is an outstandingly fun horror film. Now, as to be expected, this film does do a lot of new things with the narrative. For example, we don't get to see the kids as adults. Thank God, because that was drier than cardboard toast. Now, by focusing on this young group of kids, it actually grounds the experience, which is great, because it allows for some massive personal character development to go on. And as we all know, horror films only work if you care about the leads. Yet, is this film scary? Well, yes and no, but that's not a bad thing. What we're presented with as an audience is, in many ways, terrifying, what with a lot of contortions and warped visuals being order of the day, but it's presented in quite a silly and comical way, which actually makes sense, because this is, after all, a horror tale told from the perspective of young kids. Interestingly enough, the theme of overcoming fear actually works into the structure of the film itself, because as things go on, the events seem less and less scary to an audience and to the kids themselves because they're overcoming Pennywise's use of fear. It's quite a smart move and I'm a big fan of that and it actually makes the final battle feel even more triumphant as they overcome all of their personal fears and put that light bulb head down the drain. Now what this film has in spades is personality. All the kids bounce off each other so well that they create this frantic energy which is so lifelike to kids just being kids. And surprisingly for a horror film there's a great sense of levity. There's a lot of visual jokes, a lot of back and forth between the kids that are foul-mouthed and funny, but what this does is it creates a sense that you care about all of them. It's definitely not what you'd expect from this film from the outset. You expect sort of drab dialogue and lots of spooks, but what you get is almost like an adventure film, similar to like The Goonies, but with added terrifying elements added in. It's a really interesting mix, and I haven't seen it done before, and that's why it's so captivating. Think of it like a coming-of-age story, but with a killer clown. Ugh. Okay, so let's just say this, Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise is utter perfection. I thought that there was only room in my life for one scary clown, aka Tim Curry, but this has just come along and swept it out the f***ing door. You can clearly tell that he relishes this role, because any moment that he's on screen, he is having the time of his life. It's weird to go from horror to comedy, back to horror, back to comedy again, all in the space of about 30 seconds, yet that's what Bill, old Billy Lightbulbhead, does for us. Thanks, Bill. I'm now going to read you all of the kids' names. Okay. And, and list basically their characters. Cool. Okay, like that. Jaden Lieberher, Bill Stutter. Oh, Mr. Stutter. I think that he was given. He's given a pretty tough hand with a stutter. I think that you have to be some quite incredible actor to make it sound anything other than 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 and quite comical. But I feel like he did a very very good job. He's not what I would consider to be a strong actor. I didn't feel that his presence on screen engulf the rest of the film, but I think that, that works in a horror context because he was vulnerable and he's a child and you want to look after him and he's just lost his younger brother who loved boats and couldn't see a bloody road sign for about 20 foot. Idiot, idiot, you deserve to be eaten. He's called Ben. Oh, he's called Ben, of course he is. Tits. Tits, yeah, ah. Uh, he was an underrated actor in this. I felt like he gave a very strong performance. His love for Bev was really heartfelt. They had some very good scenes with each other and the fact that she knew his secret about loving a boy band and then there was a reference to it at some point in the film which made me laugh quite a lot. It was nice seeing a friendship build but also an unrequited love scenario. But that didn't, that storyline didn't exactly end. It just kind of filtered out. Try that again. Okay. Sophia Lillis, Beverly. 
Now, she was the real star of this show. Undeniably, she was a very strong actress. She had the boys in the palm of her hand, and I think that that was perfectly put across. She portrayed fear incredibly well. There's a beautiful scene between her and her father. Again, very uncomfortable, but from a cinematic standpoint, whoa, woomph, bazinga. That's what kids say, isn't it? No. Okay. Finn Wolfhard. He's the guy from Stranger, 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 Stranger Boy. Yeah, yeah, now, this is the problem. He is an incredibly strong actor because we've seen him in Stranger Things and he acted their house down. In this film, however, he's kind of a one-note joke. If basically there is a pause or a lull in a conversation, then he just pops up to say, F*** your mum, F*** your mum and your dirty underwear, F*** your mum and your drugs, F*** you and your f***ing drugs, you dirty mum. Like, that's, that's funny for a bit. I should know that's pretty much my character here at What Culture, but at the same time, it did get a bit grating, much like my character here at What Culture. Chosen Jacobs. Mike doesn't like killing sheep. Ah, yes. Now, far bit from me to say that any characters were superfluous. However, I do believe that Mike had the least lines, the least screen time, and the least impact on the story. All he basically was there to do was to say, hey, I've got the bolt gun. Okay. And also to make sure that the bully had some implied racism. Okay. Could this not have been merged with another character to maybe form a more rounded one? Possibly. But there we go. I I've got nothing bad to say about him. He wasn't terrible, but just... Uh, don't. Uh, he's forgettable. He's a forgettable character. Sorry. Jack Dylan Grazer. Eddie. Medication. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yes. Uh, the boy with all the drugs that do nothing, apparently. So... This is the thing, the gazebos, yes, there's a beautiful line about that in the film. It was a laugh riot. Now, I think that Eddie is a very strong character. He plays off the rest of the cast really well, quite integral to the plot because he is kind of the, we shouldn't be doing this, guys. We, we really shouldn't be doing this or pointing out all of the flaws that are almost like horror tropes, exposing them and yet still doing them anyway. Very funny, great addition to the cast, strong actor, tiny kid, almost as, he's, he's literally, about only five peters high. Wyatt Olaf, Stanley, Bar Mitzvah. Ah, right, okay. This guy was the milkiest toast I've ever seen on screen. You could have taken him out of the film and I wouldn't have even known that he was meant to be in there. He had little impact on the story. All he did was serve as a person to say, I'm, I'm Jewish, I guess, and I'm the sensible one, even though we've already got the sensible one in the form of Eddie. I just, I'm less funny. Uh, he, I forgot he was there. Yeah, that's the thing. He could have been, he could have been cut out. I wouldn't have been bothered. And his scare wasn't that great either, to be fair, was it? Out of like, if we were to rank him on the scareometer, then he's definitely in the bottom. He was lucky that he was one of the first scares. Yes. Because if he came towards the end, I think it would have been unimpressive. Yeah, very, very true. I just don't think he added anything other than he, and he stood like this all the time. So it's just like, I don't think we should do that. I don't, he didn't have Is a British accent. I don't know. I don't want to do a Jewish accent. I think that would. Let's not. <laughs> Nicholas Hamilton, Henry, the psychotic bully. Kevin Bacon, if Kevin Bacon had all of his anger taken out Rick and Morty style and made into a child, that is what this guy is. He was wicked, but very one dimensional. I mean, it's a Stephen King thing, so you're going to have your one dimensional bullies of they want to kill you for no real reason. But yes, he existed and he did the killing thing pretty darn well. There was a bit in there, I won't spoil much for you, but there's a bit where he gets a knife and he does some very unpleasant things to old tits. So that will live on in my brain for a while. But fantastic acting on that guy. Good boy. Less patronizing. Good boy. So in terms of presentation, this is pretty much every single Stephen King film mashed into one and it looks brilliant for it. Like I said before, you've got your one dimensional bullies, you're living in suburbia and the fact that all the parents are about as useless as a wet bread loaf. The thing is, is that it creates this beautiful sense of paranoia within a community, which Stephen King loves to do. It's kind of like you can't trust anyone. And also there's a giant man eating flower pot over there. That's that's him in a nutshell. I've probably just given him another idea for a book. Now, there are some outstanding shots in the film, mainly revolving around Pennywise, just the way that he contorts his body or changes shape or just finds a way to f with the kids. And it all basically screams that the creative minds behind the camera were having an absolute field day coming up with the scares for this film. They didn't have to go to the lengths that they did 
but you are so glad as an audience member that they put the hours in. For example, one of my favourite effects that kept on being used again and again was the use of stabilisation. So basically when Pennywise was charging as a kid or trying to close a large distance quickly, it would focus on his head, but the rest of the background would be moving and shaking and contorting behind him. It created some really weird imagery and like made you feel that he was much closer than he actually was, which is a really good horror tactic. But it also was quite silly, again playing into the fact that you're looking at effectively a giant headed clown. It's a weird film if you hadn't noticed that. But before you think it was all camera trickery, I need to tell you that there is a ton of practical effects that have been put into this film. And that is perfect because a lot of horror films do rely on a lot of CGI nowadays and that can kind of draw you out of the suspension of disbelief because you never feel like they're really interacting with stuff. Whereas this, when you've got say a leper chasing one of the kids around a garden, which does sound funny, I admit, but it's quite terrifying at the time, you really feel that it's there. Now that's not to say that everything was perfect because there are some naff effects and shots and just general bits and bobs in this film. It's not the perfect horror film by any stretch of the imagination. For example, when you see Pennywise opening up its mouth for the first time, I was like, that looks like the most dangerous flashlight I've ever seen. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now another one is the fact that Pennywise takes many different forms throughout the film and for the most part they are great. There are a few though that are pretty dumb and kind of pointless. For example one time he gets really really big and he's a giant clown and he's gonna crush you except he doesn't because he's a silly little sod and he goes straight back to normal size. Idiot. That's amateur killing. I could kill kids quicker than he could. Cut that bit out Ben. And weirdly enough, there's one shot which made us all groan collectively, which was when the lead Captain Stutter, or Sergeant Stutter, uh, basically looks over and sees Bev for the first time, and suddenly it goes into Vaseline vision. Is that what we just determined it to be? Yeah. It's literally like... Literally rose tinted glasses. Yeah. Like somebody just smeared her, so it was like, Who's that girl coming up the street with her ginger hair down by her feet? Like that. Now, if I was to bake a perfect horror pizza, I would use a dough of a great villain. I'd add in tomato sauce, which would be the blood. I would then put on some meaty bits, aka some talented actors, and possibly some jalapeno popper bits to really spice up the action. I would then cover it in cheese, but I would make sure that that cheese is the right amount of cheese. And there was a lot of cheese in this film. P too much cheese. It was a five cheese pizza when I didn't want five cheeses. I wanted three maximum. It was very cheesy. If I'm trying to draw an example, there's a scene in which a uh, love relationship is blossoming and uh, it comes across as incredibly cringeworthy. And I will just say, Disney, true love's first kiss. Ugh. So if I was to recommend this to you, I would use two words, or technically three, goosebumps and stranger things. Because basically that's what this film is. It's like, campy silliness meeting fun horror. I'll tell you what, I'll boil it down for you. This film gave me goosebumps and I have never seen Stranger Things. Four and a half stars. So that has been it. The film review, four and a half stars worth of fun. Let me know if you're going to go and see it and what you thought about it in the comments section below. And also let me know if you like these mano a mano things that we do masquerading as reviews because it's good for feedback. As always, I've been Jules. You can follow me at RetroJ on the Twitters. He's been Ben over in the distance. You can follow him at Confused underscore Dude on the Twitters. And we will speak to you soon. Thank you for watching it.